I've always felt like fish and chips are overpriced. Ow. And half the time they're not good. But these are always good for this price. That is but cheaper. Ah, beer battered crispiness. Hot fresh fries with the crunch. You got a good dip, some ketchup, maybe a little bit of multivinage. And you're just wasting a whole lot of money on a cheap cut of fish. All because you don't want to take the 20 minutes that it takes to prep it. It's real easy, no more excuses. So let's make this, shall we? This recipe is dummy easy, borderline foolproof. Let's begin with the sauce, full stop. You know, I really hope sauce is high on your energy chart or whatever you're using these days for astrology, I don't know, because sauce is one of the pinnacle elements of great food. Get yourself two serranos. Ideally, char those over an open flame if you have a gas stove. If not, it's okay to skip that. Now, if you are charring, once they're done and charred all over, you know, tip the steam. Let those steam covered in a bowl for five minutes. Peel them, remove their stems, and toss them into a food processor or blender along with the juice of one lemon, three cloves of garlic, and a splash of water if needed to loosen. Blend that as smooth as possible. Now, weirdly enough, a tiny, tiny splash of vegetable oil will actually smooth it out and pre-emulsify it as well, but that's also optional. In a medium-ish bowl, add one cup or 230 grams of mayonnaise, one shallot very finely diced, optionally one dill pickle, finely diced, the zest of one lemon, one teaspoon or 14 grams of mustard, and of course your serrano puree. Season that to taste with salt, if needed, stir together till combined, and that sauce is good enough to dip your big ol' cod in any day. Next up, the chips. Here we go, the English doing their thing again. Look, I love you all, seriously. Anyway, get yourself four russet potatoes, pop them into an oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about one hour or just until fork tender. And this is the real secret here. Pop those bad boys into the fridge to chill overnight. This is gonna completely change the starch structure so you get that nice crispy crunch, crunch. Now, magically the next day, wow, cut those russet potatoes in half and then into thirds or quarters depending on how thicky you want these bad boys to be. And yes, we're making a steak fry, one that you'll actually desire. From there, drop those beautiful fries into a heavy bottom pot filled with a little over halfway with vegetable oil heated to around 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Fry those in three to four batches, letting them cook until deeply crispy golden brown. And when I say deep, I mean deep crust. Look at this thing. It's like a god dang kettle cooked chip on the outside and fluffy like a cumulonimbus on the inside. This is what a proper steak fry should always be like. Moving on to the fish. Thankfully, Fish and Chips already uses one of the most affordable types of fish, cod, but you can totally go cheaper. That being said, I'd recommend going to an Asian market because sometimes they have great prices for fish and the quality is going to be a lot safer. Now, cut that fish into two and a half to three inch fillets, which should get you around eight to ten pieces. Season that fish to taste with kosher salt on all sides and let it sit at room temp for eight minutes. This will draw out the excess water from the fish so it's doit firm and it stays crispy after frying. Now for the dredge, in a medium bowl, add one cup or 150 grams of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon or half a gram of baking powder, one teaspoon or five grams of kosher salt, one teaspoon or three grams of garlic powder, whisk until thoroughly combined, and then slowly whisk in one and a quarter cup or 240 milliliters of cold light beer. Look, use whatever you have in the fridge, it's fine. But do be careful not to over whisk this into a frothy mess, otherwise you get no kisses and at that point you might as well stop cooking. Now once it all comes together, you should have a nice batter that's thick enough to cling to your finger but isn't doughy. Think, you know, tempura batter, but slightly more feek. After that, pat your fish dry. Oh, little man. <laughs> You're going into the oil. Now, toss a piece of fish in plain all-purpose flour to coat. Shake off the excess. Give it a nice dunk in your batter and immediately transfer to your fryer from earlier. It's gonna be the same temp as before. 350 to 375. It's all good. Now, fry those bad boys for two to four minutes or until you get an undeniably golden, crisp piece of fish so light it might just float out of your god dang hands. Drain that on a wire rack. Hit it again with salt and any other seasonings of choice, should you have any. And repeat with all your fish. And guess what, buddy? You're ready for an impeccable fish and chips. First, get a plate or, you know, a quarter sheet with parchment if you want a real fish and chips experience. Now, first thing, sauce is down. Beautifully. Your stunningly crispy fish. Batons of viscerally crunchy steak frites. Give her a dip and let's see if a ultra cheap fish and chips can be delicious and beautiful without, well, you know, potentially running to the nearest restroom. If I just smell this. <sighs> I hear the ocean waves clapping or uh, <laughs> smashing against the rocks. Seagulls. I've got a beautiful hot plate. Fish and chips in front of me. Ah, ah! This fish has been sitting here for what, 20 minutes? Now listen to this. Mommy? Oh my God. I don't care where you go for fish and chips. Whatever you're paying is gonna equate to this quality for this price right here. Probably one of the most overpriced things. I don't know why we haven't done this sooner. This is such a basic thing to make. The cheapest fish with some of the cheapest ingredients and you fry it and you've got it. What about them taters? Hi. Okay, all right. It's a little bit much, right? I'm sorry. 
And we didn't skip on them goddamn taters either. We didn't need a lot of ingredients to make this delicious. You could have all this flavor for the price it should have always been without any loss of flavor whatsoever. So anyway, bye. You need the B-roll thing. Oh. Well, you know what else has technique? B-roll.